Welcome everyone to the 11th annual Boston SFT fundraiser. Um, it's so good to be back home for Thanksgiving weekend. This is like a tradition for 11 years, so it's always great to be here. Um, I feel like whenever you're able to do something, like anything, for 11 straight years and do it at such a high level, I think it means that there is a cause that is really bringing us together. But not just a cause, but a group of individuals who are coming together to execute an event like this every single year at such a highly effective uh, level. So uh, thank you to all the organizers for making this happen. Uh, so for the next, yeah, please, please give it up. All the cooks, all the people helping with the DJ. Um, so I want to spend the next few minutes talking about uh, Students for Free Tibet, SFT's work for Freedom Inside Tibet, because that's, at the end of the day, that's what SFT stands for. Um, but how do we bring that positive change inside Tibet? At the end of the day, that's what it's all about, right? Bringing positive change inside Tibet. But with positive change, we have to be able to change the behavior of the Chinese government because they are the ones responsible for denying even the most fundamental human rights inside Tibet. Right? So how do we do that? How do we, as a group of Tibetans, a handful of NGOs, how do we affect and change a country that is, uh, as big and as powerful as China? Um, especially right now. Especially right now when under Xi Jinping's rule in the last three years, things in Tibet has gone from bad to worse. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about the announcement that Xi Jinping made in April. Uh, did you guys see that? He said in a public announcement that he is going to wipe out all voices of dissent inside Tibet. Anyone who supports His Holiness the Dalai Lama in any way will be wiped out. This is the newest leader of the Chinese Communist government and you can also see it in the policies and the way Tibetans inside Tibet are protesting that the situation has gone even worse in the last three years. So in that scenario, what can we do, right? How do we bring change inside Tibet? And I want to share something that happened this past summer. I think all of us felt the pain of losing one of our most beloved leaders uh, in Chinese prison after 13 years, 13 years of torture, mi uh, mistreatment, lack of medical attention. Uh, Rinpoche was a Buddhist teacher, he was an environmentalist, you know, he stood up for Tibetan language by building schools inside Tibet. He promoted uh, Tibetan Buddhism by building schools, by building monasteries in Tibet. And this is someone who was in prison, tortured, and eventually died in Chinese prison. And he is someone who has, who's probably the most high profile Tibetan political prisoner. Someone advocated not just by Tibetans, but international organizations, um, human rights defenders. Um, hello? hello? International, hello? Uh, human rights defenders. As well as uh, world leaders all around the or all around the world, this is someone who had a huge international profile. So, if the Chinese government has the audacity to end his life in prison, what chance does the ordinary Tibetan, who no one knows about, who is in some dark cell that doesn't even exist in the books, what chance do these Tibetans have? So, so as soon as Rinpoche died, um, Tibetans inside Tibet organized a sit-in. Uh, his family went to the prison asking for his body, demanding the Chinese authorities to do an investigation into his death. And for us at SFT, what we did immediately was, and many of you may have seen this uh, in the media, uh, we were able to secure a highly uh, coordinated uh, international media coverage. And for some of us who have done this work in terms of campaigning, advocacy, you know how hard it is to land the New York Times. You know, we got New York Times to run several articles exposing what happened. We got Reuters, Associated Press, you name it, right? And, and, and we all know how important the international media plays in terms of shaping public opinion, creating pressure on the Chinese government. Not only that, at that point, um, our colleague, uh, the, our SFT's campaign's director, Pema Doma, started meeting officials from the United Nations. 
lobbying them, pressuring them to put pressure on the Chinese government. Um, because at that time, we understood that in November, come November, the Chinese government had to go to Geneva, go to Geneva and stand in front of the UN's Committee Against Torture. And this committee had the opportunity to question China's torture record. So for us, the, the, the goal became very clear that when China is going to be questioned in Geneva on the human rights record, they need to question them about that. They need to question them about this Dele Rinpoche's case. Um, at that time, along with the lobbying and uh, um, the work that was happening inside in Geneva with Pema Doma as well as the Tibet advocacy team, while they were meeting officials, they were even giving them um, face-to-face -face briefings, submitting a report detailing the torture that Tenzin Dede Noguchi and other political prisoners had gone through. Here in New York, uh, SFT was able to bring Kishin Nima, who is Tenzin Dede Noguchi's cousin and family spokesperson. And he and I personally went to DC to meet the Committee Against Torture's uh, um, chairperson, Claudia Grossman, his office, and we spent an hour giving that office detailed information on what things they did which they went to. So all of this effort, the international effort, all of this organizing, all led to last week. Last week, which became the moment of truth, all these months of working. And, and you know what the committee did? The committee brought up to that. Because that's not, that's not even a given. China has so many issues. The Chinese people themselves are suffering under, under the term Chinese Communist Party. So this could have been just about, to, about China, but we made sure that Tibet was raised. China was questioned about Tibet. And not only that, the committee questioned China on specifically about his death, about what kind of investigation was done for his death. And not only that, Kimbo Karza as well, another Tibet political prisoner, and, 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 and to take it even a step further, you could see that the way they were questioning the Chinese government, they were word for word, our briefing, our meetings, our report, which shows, which shows that this was not just the committee grilling them, this was us, the Tibetan people, Tibet supporters, grilling China on the death of Tenzin Dele Rinpoche and the torture record inside Tibet. That is what we were grilling them about. So to go back to the question of how do we bring positive change inside Tibet, it's with changing their behavior. And how does something like that change their behavior? Now think about it. Every time a Tibetan is tortured inside Tibet, there has to be a consequence. Because right now, that's not the case. And you know what, what we did in the UN? In a way, it's a victory, but you know what, we could have done more. Our national governments could have done more. Our Tibetan people could have done more. The international community could have done more. However, this is a good step. And this is something that we can build on. Without this type of pressure, China doesn't even need to worry about what they do inside Tibet. With this, now we're conditioning them to change their behavior. Every time they do something, they have to think about what's, ha what's gonna happen later, right? So in their analysis of whether, should I torture this Tibetan? Should I today introduce a new policy? Now they are already conditioned to analyze the consequences. And what does China not want, right? China definitely doesn't want us to talk about the Dalai Lama, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. China doesn't want us to talk about how Tibet is not part of China. China doesn't want us to put this on international media or drag them in front of the community against torture and then talk about how they are mistreating and torturing Tibet. They don't want that. And that's why we need to do this work, because their behavior needs to change and we need to be part of that change. And I know that um, at the UN we were able to do this. And this is, again, a small drop in the bucket, right? And it's, the reason I say this is a small uh, drop in the bucket is because the oppression inside Tibet <coughs> is vast, right? We're dealing, we're talking about suppression that invades your daily life. It doesn't matter, religious freedom, freedom of expression, this is not some targeted group, this is targeting the very identity of being a Tibet. That's what's at stake. Right? So what are we going to do? There's a lot to be done, but this is a good start. Because think about the alternative. The worst thing you or I, any of us here can do, the worst thing we can do for Tibet is nothing. 
And that's what China wants. And I want to talk to you about the power of an individual action. When I talk about an alternative, think about a Tibetan, a nameless Tibetan in a dark cell in Tibet or China, getting ready to face torture. This Chinese official, even at the lowest stage, a prison guard, does not have to answer to anyone. There is no accountability inside China. No one to answer to. If you do something to a Tibetan, there is no one to tell you not to do it. But when you, as an individual, when you sign that petition, when you call your representative, what is that? That is a ray of light into that dark prison cell where a Tibetan is about to get tortured. Now, if all of us, if all of us come together and take these actions, that ray of light becomes this blistering spotlight that China cannot ignore. China will never ever do something because we ask them to. They will do something when we make them do it. And that's the work that we are talking about. That's the work that we were able to do in Geneva, but we need to do even more. We have to take the success at a much higher level. And I just want to end by saying that um, the fact that all of you are here today uh, inspires me because I think if you go around the world and ask people, do you believe in freedom, do you believe in human rights, they'll nod their head and say yes. And I think everybody here in this room is, is part of that, right? We all believe in that. But what also sets apart the people in this room is that not only do they believe in freedom and human rights, they are ready to take the next step, which is to take action, to do something about it. And by being here, by supporting the work that SFT is doing, you are part of the victories, you are part of the change, you are part of the positive change inside Tibet, and you are part of the efforts to change China's mindset and to force the change of behavior inside Tibet. So I want to thank you for being part of that. I want to thank you for supporting the Boston uh, Students for Free Tibet as well as Students for Free Tibet as a whole. And I please encourage you to please continue, continue to believe, continue to support because slowly we'll get there. It'll take time, of course, it'll take time. But please continue, please support. And, 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 I, and I have no doubt in my mind that Tibet will be free and all of us here will have a big thing to do with that. Thank you.